in the following question a child on a sledge slides down a steep hill and then travels in a straight line up an ice covered slope as illustrated in figure 3.1 so this is where the child and the sledge they are sliding down this slope and then there's an ice covered slope and the momentum carries the child and the sledge up this ice covered slope and the question states uh, that uh, at t is equal to 0 they pass point a so the sledge passes point a with speed 18 meters per second so the speed is also given it's 18 meters per second and then he comes to rest at point b uh, the child applies a brake to the sledge at point b the brake does not keep the sledge stationary and it immediately slides back down the slope towards a so at point b uh what happens it comes to rest at point b and after coming to rest at point b uh uh the brake does not keep the sledge stationary so the sled uh the sledge starts moving down the slope after it stops at point b now the variation with time t of the velocity v of the sledge from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 24 seconds is shown in figure 3.2 let's uh uh move to figure 3.2 and this is what's happening uh so at t is equal to 0 uh the speed gradually decreases and this is the point this is the rest point this is the point uh this is the point b where the child is at rest the speed if you look at the speed at this point at 12 seconds this axis is uh, time so at 12 seconds the velocity is zero so this is what's happening uh, if you look go back to the image again so this so the sledge is traveling at 18 meters per second so the initial uh, point this is 18 meters per second on the graph and uh, it's going to decelerate it's going to slowly gradually the speed would decrease and it would reach point b and after reaching point b the sledge uh, goes in the opposite direction so the velocity would have a negative sign and the velocity would start to increase again so this is exactly what's happening after at 12 uh, seconds it comes to rest uh, the sledge starts traveling backwards the velocity is in the backward direction and this is the slope uh, the velocity is now increasing but in the negative direction which means it's going in the opposite direction so the first part of the question uh, is state the time taken for the sledge to travel from a to b so initially at 18 meters per second it's traveling slowly gradually it decreases in speed reaches a uh, rest state the uh, velocity becomes equal to 0 at b so this is point b so how much time did it take it took the sledge exactly if you look at this it took the sledge 12 seconds so you can uh, you can show this on the graph uh make sure to label it on the graph uh, this would be a good practice uh label this point as a and label this point as b so it's it's going to take uh, the sledge 12 seconds to reach point p so that is the answer for this part now moving to the next part of the question the next part of the question is uh determine the displacement of the sledge up the slope from point a at time uh, point a at time t is equal to 24 seconds now to find displacement uh, of the sledge up the slope from point a to time t is equal to 24 seconds i'm going to go back to the graph uh so if i go back to my graph you'll notice that uh, uh you're supposed to calculate displacement uh, from this point from a which and from a to t is equal to 24 seconds so we have to reach this point so we need to calculate the total displacement from point a at t is equal to 24 at t is equal to 24 seconds so this is the point that we need to calculate uh, what is the total displacement now the first thing is uh, that this is a velocity time graph Velo velocity to time is distance and remember a velocity time graph the area under the graph is is always uh, distance it's the distance covered so i'm going to first try and uh, find out the distance that is covered from point a to point b so if you go back and see the slope uh, the first distance that i'm going to try and cover it's going to be from point a at t is equal to 0 to point b so what is the distance that is covered from point a to point b so this is my first task so going back to my graph uh, the distance covered 
because at B the sledge comes to rest. So the, in the first 12 seconds, it, it would be area under the graph, which is going to be half into uh, velocity, which is which over here is 18 meters per second. So this is 18 meters per second. So we're going to we're going to uh, we're going to write the formula of uh, of uh, the area of a triangle. The time that is uh, taken is 12 seconds. So it's uh, 12. And we can simplify, simplify this, it's going to be 2, uh, this would become 6, so it's 18 into 6. And this comes out to be equal to 108 meters. So that comes out to be equal to 108 meters. Uh, going back to my graph, so in the first 12 seconds, the distance that is covered uh, from A to B is 108 meters. So this is the distance that is covered by the sled as it climbs to point B. And this takes 12 seconds. So in 12 seconds, it's covering 108 meters. But after covering uh, this, uh, after reaching point B, the sled starts to move in the opposite direction. So, so the velocity becomes negative. So now I'm moving to the next part. After rest, after taking rest at uh, B, it now starts to move, the velocity starts to move in the opposite direction. So, so in the next 12 seconds, this is the velocity time graph area. This is the area that is covered because now the sled is moving backwards. This sled over here, after reaching point B, it's going to start moving backwards. It's going to go down the hill back again. So we're going to calculate uh, how much distance it travels. So again, it's going to be area in this uh, triangular region. So it's going to be half into, we need to find what this, uh, what this negative velocity is as it is moving down the hill at 24 seconds. And this uh, negative velocity at uh, 24 seconds would be 6 meters per second. If you, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's going to be approximately 6 meters per second. So my area over here, this area over here, it's going to be half into the uh, height, which is uh, over here is 6 meters per second into the uh, length which uh, is time over here this length over here is time so that is uh, 12 seconds uh, so it's basically 2 uh, and 12 would cancel out that 6 so it's going to be 36 meters so going back to my diagram uh, so the issue now is that it took 108 meters to climb up that's the total distance between a and b and when it is moving back at t is equal to 24 seconds um, the sledge has only covered 36 meters. So moving upwards, it covered 108 meters, then it started moving backwards. And up till time t is equal to 24 seconds, it had only covered uh, 36 meters. So we need to find displacement. The net displacement in this case from point A is going to be, it's going to be this distance over here. So it's basically 108 meters. And from that 108 meters, I'm going to subtract 36 meters. So it's 108 uh, 108 meters minus 36 meters. So going back to my question now. Uh, so calculating displacement, it's uh, so displacement is going to be 108 meters minus 36 meters. And the answer comes out to be, it comes out to be equal to 72 uh, 72 meters. So that's that's the displacement from point A at time t is equal to 24 seconds. Now in the next part of the question, let's move to point C now. Uh, you're supposed to, the question is, show that the acceleration of the sledge as, as it moves from B back towards A is 0.5 meters per second square. So we need to, we need to find, uh, uh, we need to prove that the acceleration down the slope is this value over here. So going back to my diagram and the two graphs. So moving backwards, we're starting at rest B. The initial velocity U is going to be zero. The final velocity, if we look at the graph, which is below here. So the final velocity in the graph uh, at T is equal to 24 seconds is six meters per second. So you're basically starting at this point over here, zero meters per second. And you're moving now at six meters per second as you're going down the slope and the time it takes is, uh, 
it's uh, between these two points is 12 seconds so in 12 seconds you're going from six uh, from zero to six meters per second now moving back to our question so I've replicated the diagram over here. Initial velocity is 0 meters per second. Final velocity is 12 meters per second after 12 seconds. So 12 seconds traveling down the slope, the velocity becomes 12 meters per second. And I need to find acceleration. Now I'm going to use the simple formula, which is V equals U plus 80. Or we can write it the other way around. Acceleration is the change in velocity, V minus U, divided by the time it takes for that change in velocity. So it's... Uh, the final velocity is 12. The initial velocity is, uh, no, the final velocity is actually 6 meters per second. I've actually made a mistake over here. So it's 6 meters per second in the graph. So it's 6 meters per second minus the initial velocity, which was 0. And the time it took was 12. So according to this, my acceleration is coming out to be equal to 0 0.50 meters per second square. So this is my answer. And this is the value that I have proved. Now in the next part of the question, if you move to the next part of the question, you have uh, the child and sledge have a total mass of 70 kg. The component of the total weight of the child and the sledge that acts down the slope is 80 newtons. So this is the component that's acting uh, uh, down the slope. And you're asked to determine the frictional force on the sledge as it moves uh, from point B towards A. Now what this basically means is that uh, you have, uh, this is your slope, you draw the slope, this is my slope, uh, this is where the sledge is, so let's uh, think of this box as your sledge and the weight downwards is 70 kg or 700 newtons approximately or 70, uh, let me write it as uh, 70 70 g, g is the acceleration due to gravity and you take it as 9.81. So this is the force that's acting downwards. The component of the total weight of the child and sledge that acts down the slope, this component over here that's acting downwards towards, uh, 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 towards the slope, the component of the weight that's acting in this direction is 80 newtons. Now there's going to be a frictional force that would be op uh, that would be acting in the opposite direction, trying to stop the sledge from moving. So there is a there is a frictional force, and right now this frictional force is unknown. I don't know what that frictional force is, uh, but that would result in the net resultant force. So it's basically 80 newtons downwards minus the frictional force FR. So there's a force that is downwards. This downwards force is greater because the sledge is moving downwards, it's accelerating downwards. So that means that there's a net resultant force that's acting in the downward direction. So it's 80 newtons minus the frictional force that would result in the resultant force or the net resultant force on the sledge. This net resultant force can be calculated because I know the mass of the sledge, which is uh, which is given as uh, it's given as 70, so 70 kg. That's 70 kg, and I know the acceleration down the slope. The acceleration down the slope, which was also given in the previous part, is 0.5 meters per second square. So F is equal to m a. So mass into acceleration down the slope is 0. Point 5 meters per second square. So this would be my net resultant force that's acting downwards. Uh, the body is moving uh, at 0.5 meters per second square and the mass of the body is 70 kg. So we now just need to, we just need to solve this now. It's 80 minus uh, the frictional force. And if I make the frictional force the subject of the equation, it's going to be 80 minus 70 to 0.5 would be equal to 35. Uh, so 70 multiplied by 0 0.5, half, half of 70 is, uh, is definitely 35. And this would be equal to my frictional force, which would come out to be, if I subtract 80 from, uh, if I subtract 35 from 80, that would give me 45 newtons. 
and that is the correct answer 45 newtons that's your frictional force and then moving to the next part of the question the next part of the question uh, wants us to calculate the angle theta the slope uh, of the slope to the horizontal now again I'm going to uh, redraw this diagram quickly so there is a sledge over here and it has a downward weight of the downward weight is 70 kg or 70 G's that's the downward weight and the component of this uh, force this downward force is 80 Newtons how do you find the component uh, down the slope the way you find the component is you make a triangle so let's draw a triangle and this component over here of the same force this force can be divided into two components one would be your uh, vertical component and the other one would be your horizontal component so the component of the force of this particular force down the slope is going to be this force over here and if I use my and I don't know what that force is so if I use the this angle over here is theta now I can calculate I can try to calculate this theta because uh, if I take sine of theta sine uh, or cos of theta if I take cos of theta cos of theta would be adjacent which is this component of the force down the slope that was 80 newtons so this over here is 80 newtons right uh, so this is adjacent over the hypotenuse down this uh, the original force or weight acting downwards was 70 g or 70 into 9.81 and if I solve this I'll be able to calculate the value of theta let's call it theta 1 because this is this is not the theta that we are actually trying to calculate so my answer comes out to be if I take the inverse of theta the inverse of this entire thing it's going to come this value comes out to be equal to 83.3 degrees so this angle is now known it's 83.3 degrees and we had to calculate the angle of the slope from the horizontal so we were interested in this theta over here so this would be our theta remember in a triangle all angles must add up to one uh, 180 degrees this already is a right angle so I'm going to add theta plus theta 1 which is uh, this value over here it's 83.3 degrees and uh, plus I'm going to add 90 degrees and they should all add up to be equal to 180 degrees so 90 gets cancelled out this would be left with 90 then I take 83 on the other side so my value for theta this theta over here this would come out to be equal to 6.7 degrees so that is the angle of the slope with the horizontal this is the horizontal so this is the angle of the slope with the horizontal it's coming out to be equal to 6.7 degrees the next part of the question is on the Doppler effect the child on the sledge blows a whistle between t is equal to 4 and t is equal to 8 seconds the whistle emits a sound of frequency 900 hertz the speed of the sound in the air is also given as 340 meters per second a man standing at the at point a hears the sound and you're you're being asked to determine the initial frequency of the sound heard by the man now to solve this question i need uh, two things one is what was the velocity at t is equal to 4 seconds and what was the velocity at t is equal to 8 seconds so I'm going to go back to my graph and see and check what the velocities were at t equal to 4 seconds actually I just need to find the velocity at t equal to 4 seconds because I need to figure out the initial frequency of what happens so this is my velocity time graph t equal to 4 seconds this is 4 seconds over here uh, this is the point t is equal to 4 second so on my graph it's probably 12 meters per second so if you look carefully it's coming out to be equal to 12 meters per second so that's the speed at which the sled is moving and now we, figure, we need to figure out where was it moving I'm also also going to note down the velocity at uh, 8 meters per second uh, the velocity is now actually slower so it's uh, it's coming out to be over here so this is around 6 meters per second so the velocity decreases it's 12 meters per second at this point and at this point over here at 8 seconds uh, the velocity if I make a line the velocity at 8 meters per second is uh, almost half or exactly half 6 meters per second so these are my two velocities I need to look at the diagram as well to figure out uh, 
what was happening. So this is my diagram. If you look at this diagram, the person is standing at point A. So let's, let's say there's somebody standing at point A and he's listening to the whistle. Now the sled, it moves slowly and eventually moves to this point uh, at t is equal to 4 seconds. Whatever the, that point is, let's say it's approximately over here. And then the sled moves to t is equal to uh, 8 seconds. Uh, if you go back to the diagram, you'll notice that at t is equal to 12 seconds, the sledge has come to rest uh, because it's going up the, up the hill. So the sledge is slowly decelerating. So at t is equal to 4 seconds, uh, there is whistling going on. So this is the point where whistling is done. So the sledge is whistling. And the waves from the whistle, they would eventually reach uh, point A. And that's where the whistle would be heard. So I've made a simplified diagram over here. This is the sledge moving away from point A. And at t is equal to 4 seconds, uh, the sledge is traveling at 12 meters per second. It's traveling up the hill, so uh, it's slowing down. Eventually, it's going to slow down. So this is what's happening. This uh, The sledge or the child on the sledge is blowing a whistle. And this is what Doppler effect is. That the sound uh, frequency of the sound uh, uh, behind it is going to be lesser because the sound waves or the sound fronts, they're going to get spread out because the because sledge is moving in this particular direction. It's moving in this particular direction. And wave fronts in front of the sledge, they're going to be closer together because the sledge is moving in this direction. So the sound that is produced, uh, the other sound waves would also be produced and they would all compress together because the sledge is moving in this direction. Uh, so the frequency of the sound would be lesser in front of the sledge and the frequency of the sound would be greater uh, behind the sledge. It's going, to be, it's going to be lesser behind the sledge and greater in front of the sledge. Now the formula for calculating the chain frequency of the sound waves, the frequency over here decreases, the frequency of the waves over here decreases as the person is moving. That formula is this given over here where V is the, is the velocity of the sound in air. That's 340 meters per second. So it's going to be 340 over here and it's going to be 340 over here as well. Uh, the velocity of the observer is going to be zero. The observer is simply standing over here. Uh, there's a stationary observer. So there is no velocity. This velocity V, v observer is going to be zero. And the velocity of the source uh, or the person that's uh, producing the whistle, is, is he's traveling at 12 meters per second. So that is 12 meters per second. So it's going to be, uh, that is 12 meters per second. So it's going to be minus 12 and uh, the other thing is that the original frequency of the sound is given as uh, 900 hertz so this over here is 900 hertz so we're going to calculate uh, our new frequency which is going to be it's going to be 340 divided by 340 divided by uh, 340 plus 12 I'm going to take it as plus 12 uh, this Vs is uh, because the because the uh, the source is moving away, which means uh, it's I'm not going to take it as 12 meters per second, but as minus 12 meters per second. Remember this: if it's moving away, this would be taken as plus 12 meters per second. So this would become 340 plus 12, and I'm going to multiply it by 900 hertz, and the value that I'm going to get is going to be. It's going to be 870, 870 hertz. So this would be my answer to this question. So remember this formula. Be careful with this formula. V plus V observer and V minus uh, V source. But uh, if the source is moving away from the observer, then this should become, uh, this should become, uh, the signs should change. Because if it's uh, moving away, Instead of 12 meters per second, this would be taken as minus 12 meters per second. Uh, because this direction towards the detector is taken as the positive direction. So this would be taken as the negative direction because it's moving away from the source. So the sign of this uh, V source is going to change and it would become 340 plus 12. And uh, so using the formula, I'm getting 870 hertz. 
Now the next part of the question is uh, that we need to describe and explain qualitatively only the variation of any of the frequency of the sound heard by the man. So what happens to uh, what what they're basically asking is that if the observer is standing over here, so initially we calculated that the frequency is decreasing at say 70 hertz at t zero to four seconds. But this sledge, it's remember, it's moving up the hill. It's slowing down. It slows down, and it comes to rest. If this sledge comes to rest, which means that the Doppler effect is going to be lesser and lesser because the source of the whistle is not going to be moving that fast. So initially, it was moving very fast at 12 meters per second. Uh, remember, we also figured out that at t is equal to eight from the graph, which we previously saw. Uh, the sledge was moving at 6 meters per second, so which means that the speed is decreasing. So, and it's it's eventually going to come to rest at t is equal to 12 uh, seconds over here. So the sledge is slowing down, the Doppler effect would be uh, lesser and lesser. Eventually the frequency of the sound would, would come back to the original frequency. So initially if it's moving very fast, you're hearing a low frequency, you're hearing 870 hertz over here. The observer is hearing 870 hertz but if the speed of the sledge is becoming lesser and lesser the frequency of the sound would eventually become uh, if the sledge stops and it slows down and gradually it stops the frequency would come back to 900 hertz and the Doppler effect would finish so the answer to this question qualitatively what happens to the frequency of the sound to write that the frequency of sound increases and eventually the Doppler effect would uh, would be minimum and it would decrease as well uh, the frequency of, uh, of sound increases because the sledge uh, velocity decreases so gradually the sledge velocity is going to decrease